just finished watching the ball game here, the Jays and the Red Sox, and it's disgusting. It's, it's horrible. I can't stand to watch this garbage, and I'm blaming it squarely on the manager. Yes, we booted it around a bit. Yes, we left runners in scoring position, but Charlie Montoyo, I used to have a lot of respect for you. You came from the Tampa Bay organization. You paid your dues in the minor leagues without ever really getting a break, and you got your break, and I got to say, pal, you're not cutting the mustard. Your bullpen management is the worst of all of your bad qualities. It Look, Stripling is pitching. Uh, he's into the six with two outs. He gives up a couple hits. He's around 80 pitches. Typically nowadays, your, your average major league starter can go about 100. To me, how you build confidence in a team, and, and the announcers say this all the time, you win with starting pitching. If the opposing team can't score runs against you, then, you know, you can't lose, right? So there is no cause to pull Stripling out. And you know what? It, it's Stripling game to lose. If he ends up getting a tie to five in that sixth, then, you know, so be it. it it's on the starter. What do you do with two runners on? You bring in the badly scuffling Tyler Chatwood. I get it. He had been lights out at first. But in order to get him his confidence back, I think you bring him in in low leverage situations. Like, you know, up by four, three or four, down by three or four. The game's not on the line, so this clown can learn to find the strike zone. But no, you take your starter out who's not struggling. And that's the thing. If your starter gives up a couple hits in a row, if any pitcher gives a couple hits in a row, they're not necessarily scuffling. Nine times out of ten, if they're giving up hits, they're throwing fucking strikes. You know, it's when they start walking batters, hitting batters, wild pitches. They can't, they got no control. And what did Chad would do? He walked two, he hit, or no, he walked one, he hit two, and threw a wild pitch. And uh, that only made it. 5-4, and, and yeah, again, we, we left runners on and all that, but that was Stripling's game, Charlie, and you, you took it out of his hands, and uh, I'm tired of you. You're, you're screwing up. You're managing to lose. Like, what's it going to take? You know what I mean? Like, we we can't, and, and look, it's not the manager's fault if you, you know, you're, you're losing 6 nothing, or you're winning 6 nothing. that's not on managers, that's on the players, but it's on these close games where management makes all the difference. And I know in the contemporary era of baseball, we use the bullpen a lot more than what has been in days past. Like in the 70s, I think it was like four-man rotation. They might have had a a closer at the end and like one long man for the bullpen, like two two bullpen members, you know, as, a pi as opposed to a five man starting rotation and like eight or nine in the pen or occasionally there's only seven, you know, and it's just, it's not, it doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't know where this is coming from. Like, let your starter throw his hundred pages or if he tells you he's got to come out of the game, great. And, you know, take him out. But if he wants to be in there and he's throwing strikes, you know, leave it up to him to lose. Don't, he, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No need to overmanage, you know. Let, let these players win. Let them play the way the game is supposed to be played. Like, it's just, it doesn't. I just, I don't understand it. I, I, I can't, I can't fathom how somebody who plays professional ball, like, cannot see this, and the way the game was played for decades and decades is not the way the game's played anymore, and it, it doesn't, it's just stupid. It's moronic, and I think Charlie needs to be sent down to the minors to manage for five games. Take him out, like, unless these directives are coming from, you know, upper, up, like, President Shapiro or whatever, that we that we have to go to the bullpen when the starters still got plenty in the tank. Uh, that, and if, if that's what upper management thinks, fire them. They're wrong. This is not, this is not the way to play baseball. Uh, 
it, it's a shame. And, and there's a number of things like um, uh, McGuire, right? He's a backup catcher. And yes, I know Danny Jansen is hurt. Yes, I know Alejandro Kirk is hurt. But this Riley Adams guy, uh, I'll bring him up. He, he hasn't shown any signs of messing up behind the plate. Uh, he, he he right away. He's he's your number one, and and McGuire's the backup because McGuire has never showed that he can play better than a backup catcher. Another thing you don't do. Yeah, I know BGO has got a high upside, but he hasn't really shown that he knows how to hit yet. Joe Panic has shown that he knows how to hit. So you 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 make sure to get Panic in that lineup while he's hot, right? Like don't take a good bat out of there. Uh. And that's another thing. They, they've they been screwing up. So, like, they added offense in the offseason. But really, um, you know, Leah, Liam Hendricks, the White Sox closer, had spent some time in Dunedin. He's had a couple of stints with the Blue Jays in the past. Bring bring Hendricks in. Spend the money. Do what it takes, you know. Like, I, I, I know we did get a closer and he got hurt. There's been several injuries in the bullpen. So, we haven't had the best of what we've had. But I maintain that, the like, the guys who were doing awesome in April, they just got overworked. And I was thinking, you know, maybe the hit hitters were catching on, but that ain't it because they're not throwing strikes. It's so, oh, it's just so frustrating as a Jays fan to watch. So, yes, I am calling to send Charlie Montoya to the minors for five games. Let, uh, I don't know who the bench coach is anymore. Uh, let Pete Walker manage the game for, uh, for for five or whatever you know like just send a message here like this is professional sports sometimes it needs to be ruled with an iron fist and you gotta play to win another thing you can do is you know always always be aggressive like look the if a catcher throws out 30 percent of runners attempting to steal that's considered phenomenal well in that case that means that like seven out of ten times you're probably going to steal that base so what should you do for the guys that can run run them you know stay out of that double play get the runner to third base with less than two outs and then you're doing you're playing the right you still might not cash your man you might strike out or pop fly or whatever you can't score the runner from second but you're doing or third but you're doing everything you can to get him in now do i mean you know, if a runner's on you uh, and Vladdy's up back, do you steal then? Well, no, probably not because, you know, they'll, they'll probably just intentionally walk Vladdy and give him the open base. So you don't need to be absolutist about it. But I think in games where the run spread is three or less runs on either side, either when you're losing, send those guys. You know, I mean, don't send, you know, uh, Telez or or Kirk or you know even even Vladdy really you know but for guys that have some wheels let them run you know uh, like this isn't like the simple and straightforward answer is the best answer like get your pit pitchers to throw strikes and if they can't throw strikes they don't pitch and if they get hit they get hit but like you know giving up two back to back home runs is a lot worse than like um, or is a lot better than you know, uh, six walks in a row and then like a big grand slam, you know, and way less pitches, you know. And that's the thing. If if you fail seven out of ten times, hit three, that means you hit 300 as a hitter, that is a phenomenal average. So most of the time you throw a cookie right over the middle of the plate, they're going to pop it out, you know. Like, but if you throw the ball around and you can't hit the strike zone, then there's nothing – there's nothing can be done. And I was tired of it. We need to play the game more old school. We need to stick with the starters. Starters, you gotta you gotta let them throw their hundred pitches. Uh, extend them sometimes to 120 if you have to. But it should be an edict that the starter must throw six innings and you should push for seven most of the time. And that way the pen still get work. But nobody's, um, you know, and if, if you do find a rare gem like a Roy Halliday who pitches the contact, can throw nine innings in under 100 pitches, sure, let 
let him let let your starter throw the complete game. But that but that just that doesn't happen, right? So if 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 you insist that they get six and try for seven almost every game, if that's your strategy, you're gonna win ball games and you're not gonna burn your pen out. And you know that way, if like something happens where like somebody goes down in the third or like you know you have to go to extras and you have to use your whole bullpen, then you got to do what you got to do. But if you're being stupid, 80 pitches and he just give up a couple, couple hits in a row, it's strictly a game to lose. You leave him in, man. Like stop fucking around, guys. Get it together. I'm tired of it. I have respect for you, Charlie, coming from the Tampa Bay organization, but you really disappoint me as a Blue Jays fan. And I want to see a change. Send him down the minors five games. I've had enough. Okay, that's my rant for now. Goodbye.